Joining us now is Dave Lalman, our Extension Beef Cattle Specialist, to talk about a cover crop and grazing study underway at OSU. And Dave, you and the team have been working on this for a while now. Tell us what you've been doing out here in this pasture. Give us an update. That's right. We came out last summer and looked at the sorghum sedan and sun hemp and cow pea cover crop that we had. This is the same land, but we've got crabgrass on it this year. Um, but still, the primary objective is the same, and that is working with Dr. Warren in Plant and Soil Sciences. We're trying to establish optimal conditions for wheat planting this fall. I mean, that's really the primary objective. And then secondarily, we're hoping that we can get some additional productivity out of the cover crop by grazing cattle on it uh, through that through that late summer, mid to late summer period. And this summer you have crabgrass planted out here. Last year you had something different. Talk about what's going on this summer and why it's a little different and what the thought is behind it. Okay, we used brown midrib sorghum sedan last summer along with a little bit of sun hemp and cow peas. Um, last year we, we discovered and producers told us that uh, ca the cattle didn't graze the sun hemp or the cow peas very well and so that was one of the factors. You know we had quite a bit of sorghum sedan production or dry matter but it was only about it was only about 60 percent of the stand and so in terms of forage availability if the cows ignore 40 percent uh, you don't have as much as it looks like you have. With crabgrass this year, we just broadcast the crabgrass seed to encourage the crabgrass stand because we know we're going to get some crabgrass if we have moisture. And so it cut out the drilling, the no-till drill. Uh, it also was less expensive from a, just a seed standpoint. Um, and a lot of producers have crabgrass to graze in the summer anyway. Now you mentioned that you limit graze and I see, we see the pasture is kind of taped off so you're primarily focusing on this area right now and then you'll, you'll shift to the back part of the pasture? What you're referring to is that we have a little rotational grazing pattern set up here. Uh, so we've just got these, these little pastures broken into three sections and so we'll graze um, about a five acre section. There's, by the way, there's 25 head of cattle yearling fall born calves out here. So there's about 17,500 pounds of beef per acre out here grazing. The reason for the uh, three sections in each little pasture is because we want to give, we want to try to take it down relatively quick to about 40 to 50 percent of the stand and then move on and let that let that grow back if we get the moisture. And uh, so far, we've had a lot of moisture and it's come back pretty fast. We have, it's been quite a summer. Now, in terms of the pasture, is it better to graze it than to harvest hay out of here? That, that's uh, one of the primary principles of the project is that, you know, if you graze it and the animals defecate out there where they're grazing, they're returning about 80 to 85 percent of the nutrients that they harvest go right back into the soil except it's processed, right? Uh, so we think that's a big benefit and very little cost actually to the grazing system in terms of nutrient removal, you know, nitrogen fertilizer, phosphorus fertilizer, and so on is returned to the soil. So it should be a very substantial uh, benefit and overall, what do you hope to get out of this and, and out of the study? We hope that the cattle uh, will gain somewhere in the neighborhood of two pounds a day. Um, they gained a little bit less than that last year on the sorghum sedan. And so we'll get, we hope to get some cattle gain, which is obviously very valuable in this high cattle market that we have. Um, and then, but really that's the secondary objective. The primary objective again is uh, optimal as, as we can create soil conditions for planting the wheat this fall. And so we'll try to remove these cattle um, when 
the uh, when there's 40 to say 50 percent or, or six to eight inches or something like that of residual left to protect uh, the soil surface from the from the sun drying it out okay dave Lawman, our extension beef cattle specialist thank you very much and we'll catch up with you again when you have some research results in a few months sounds good thanks a lot